Ladies and gentlemen, I've been hooked on The Walking Dead for years, as you guys definitely know, and I've always had this nagging question. Could any of the stuff in the show actually, actually happen? I mean, is it possible to wake up one day and find yourself in a world overrun by walkers, or is that just some crazy far-fetched thing? I went down a whole rabbit hole, as I tend to do on this exact topic, and let me tell you, what I found was honestly mind-blowing just in general about all sorts of things that I had no idea about, so I'm really excited to share them with you. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the shocking facts about how we could possibly be close to a real-life walker virus, or how we could possibly not be really close to a walker virus. And trust me, some of this stuff really did genuinely surprise me, and I think it'll surprise you too. So with all that out of the way, let's jump right into it. You know, the zombies in The Walking Dead aren't as far-fetched as you might think, so let's break down what makes a walker a walker. We're talking about an airborne virus that infects everyone, slows down decomposition, and somehow manages to kickstart a dead brain. Sounds crazy, right? But here's the thing, some of these traits aren't too far off from things that we see in the real world. Let's start with the airborne nature of the virus. In The Walking Dead, everyone's infected, just waiting to turn when they die. Now, we don't have anything quite that widespread, but we do have some nasty airborne diseases out there. Think about the flu or COVID-19. These viruses can spread through the air, infecting large populations and doing so quickly. And the difference is, thankfully, they don't turn us into flesh-eating monsters, but they do spread rapidly fast and have some pretty nasty side effects. But what about the reanimating of the dead and all of that business? I mean, look, I know what you're thinking. That's impossible, right? But not exactly, to be honest with you. We can't bring back the dead, but the idea of a virus affecting the brain's functionality isn't completely out there. Some real-world viruses can cause changes in behavior or neurological symptoms, for sure. The Walking Dead also shows us walkers that don't decompose as quickly as normal corpses. This is where things get a bit more grounded in reality. There are many factors that can slow down decomposition in the real world, from cold temperatures and dry conditions, things like that can slow down and preserve a body for longer than you'd expect. But let's get to the kicker, the closest real-world equivalent to the Walker virus. There's this thing called Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, I think, I think that's how you pronounce it, but it's essentially a parasitic fungus that infects ants, and I swear it's like something straight out of a horror movie. And I mean, it kind of is, because it's literally the Cordyceps virus from The Last of Us, which is a bit far-fetched because it doesn't happen in humans, but it does happen in things like ants. This fungus in particular takes over ants' nervous systems in the real world, like real-world ants, basically turning them into a zombie. The infected ant is forced to climb to the top of a plant, clamp down on a leaf, and, and die. And then the fungus grows out of its head and releases spores to infect more ants. It's nature's very own zombie apocalypse, just on a much smaller scale. And if I was an ant watching another ant go through this, I'd be pooping everywhere. No joke. But before you start freaking out about zombie ants taking over the world, remember that this fungus is highly specialized for ants not for humans. It's not going to suddenly just start infecting us, but it does show that mind-controlling parasites aren't just the stuff of science fiction. They could, in theory, happen and do happen naturally in the world. But here's where things get really interesting. What if I told you that Mother Nature has already cooked up some seriously creepy diseases that turn their victims into something unnervingly close to zombies? Let's talk about how diseases can mess with our brains. Now, we all know that when we're sick, we don't exactly feel like ourselves, but some illnesses take this to a whole other level, and they can actually change how we think, how we act, and even how people see us as who we are. A prime example of this is rabies, and it's a disease that scares me to death. Just as much as I'd be scared of an, being an ant and seeing another ant with cordyceps, rabies actually freaks me out. This virus is seriously no joke, and once it gets into your brain, it's like a horror movie playing out in real life in front of your eyes. 
People with rabies can become confused, agitated, and even aggressive, and they might even hallucinate or have trouble swallowing, which is nuts. And in some cases, they're even afraid of water. There's countless videos on YouTube already of people trying to drink water with rabies, and it is one of the craziest things I've ever seen. You're watching that on screen right now. But it's like the virus is turning them into some kind of rabid animal. And the worst part, if it's not treated early, it's almost always fatal. Like if you do not get the rabies shot or get treated right after you've gotten bit, there's a good chance you are screwed. It's happened to pretty much everyone who's been infected with rabies, which is absolutely insane and genuinely terrifying. It freaks me out to no end. That being said though, rabies isn't the only brain-bending disease out there. Have you ever heard of prion diseases? These are rare but terrifying conditions caused by misfolded proteins in the brain. They can lead to rapid mental decline, personality changes, and a loss of body control. And one of the most famous prion diseases is called Creutzfeldt jakob disease. I hope I pronounced that one right too because all these names for science things are just the most insane things I've ever heard. But this disease that I'm not gonna say again can turn a normal person into someone who can't speak, move, or even recognize their own family in a matter of months. Now I know what you're probably all thinking, this is pretty scary, but you may have heard of it already, and either way it's not exactly zombie level stuff, but get ready because we're about to get into some even more mind-bending territories out here in this video world. Oh, and by the way, if you're not subscribed at this point, definitely be sure to get subscribed. It is literally free, costs you nothing, and helps grow this channel to more people. So you could always unsubscribe at any moment, but I'd really appreciate it if you did. Let's get to some more crazy stuff here. There are actually parasites out there that can control their host's behavior. Yeah, you did hear that, right? These little critters can hijack an animal's brain and make it do things it would never, ever normally do. These are parasites that can make rats attracted to cat urine, which is gross, but basically sending them to their deaths, which is nuts, or cause fish to swim to the surface where birds can essentially catch them. It's like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, but it's happening right here in nature. And I know you're probably still thinking, can any of these actually cause a full-scale outbreak to the likes of what we've seen in The Walking Dead? Well, let's just say this is where things get a little bit more interesting. So we've already talked about some pretty crazy diseases out there, but let's get real for a second. What if a walker-like virus actually escaped from a lab? I mean, we've seen lab leaks before, as you guys know, but what would happen next? Let me break that down for you. So viruses are constantly changing and adapting and finding new ways to spread. It's a constant race between the virus and our efforts to contain it. And in today's world, we're connected now more than ever. You can literally hop on a plane and be halfway across the globe in a matter of hours. That's great for vacations, but it's not so great when it comes to containing diseases. A virus could potentially spread to multiple countries before we even know it exists, which is kind of what's happening right now with the bird flu. That's pretty scary, isn't it? Now here's where things get really interesting. Population density plays a huge role in how quickly a virus can spread, and in a crowded city, like me in New York here, you're constantly in close contact with people, touching the same surfaces, breathing in the same air. It's no wonder that The Walking Dead showed Atlanta falling so fast. I mean, I'm surrounded by the neurovirus every day right now, and the fact that I haven't thrown up yet is a testament in and of itself, despite me touching poles on subways all the time. I don't get it, but the fact of the matter is, it's spreading rapidly here in New York City, and it would spread, any disease would spread super fast in any city. Like I said, like we saw with Atlanta. That being said, I don't want you to think that that means we're on the verge of an actual apocalypse in any which way, because like I said, there's not much out there to support that, but a full-scale walker outbreak in general, like what we've seen in The Walking Dead, is it's scientifically impossible. It's, it's just straight up pure fiction. I mean, there's no real way for something like that at that big of a scale to happen. And plus, once you're dead, you're dead. There's no coming back from that, no matter how cool it looks on TV. And I guess you could make that argument for like the rage virus and things like that in 28 days later. Sure, that's definitely possible to happen, but just on the scale where it overruns militaries, 
That's extremely far-fetched. I mean, that being said, don't breathe easy just yet. While we might not have to worry about the dead rising in particular, there are still plenty of real-world threats to keep us on our toes. In fact, we might be even scarier than fiction in some ways. While we might not have to face a real-world walker virus, the potential for a serious outbreak is very real, and we've already seen that in a lot of ways, especially over these last few years with the pandemic. But in some ways, to me, that's even scarier than fiction. I mean, at least we don't have to worry about our dead relatives coming back to try to eat us, but it's still pretty scary. Now, that being said, even though it is outlandish, the Pentagon themselves have some interesting documents tucked away, and Conplan 8888 is definitely one of them. It's not about terrorists or foreign invasions. It's about zombies. Yeah, no, I, I'm not kidding. The United States military has a plan in place for dealing with a potential undead outbreak. Now, if you've never heard of this, before you start worrying that this is a crazy waste of some taxpayer money, I need to explain it a little bit more. Conplan 8888, officially known as Counter Zombie Defense, is actually a training tool for junior officers. Why zombies? Well, when you're training for a military personnel, you can't use real countries as the bad guys, and that's obviously asking for trouble, so instead they come up with this wild zombie scenario to teach strategic planning without causing any diplomatic trauma. But definitely don't think that this is just some joke plan. Conplan 8888 goes into serious detail. It covers different types of zombies, threat levels, and potential military responses. It's like they took every zombie movie ever and made it into a legit military playbook for how to respond to it. Now, you might be wondering what this has to do with the real world outbreaks and well that's the clever part of this a lot of the principles in con plan 8888 can be applied to actual pandemics and it's really all about rapid response coordination between different military branches and dealing with widespread chaos which would inevitably happen but con plan 8888 isn't the only thing that the military's got when it comes to outbreaks they have a whole ton of protocols for dealing with pandemics these focus on things like containment vaccination programs and public communication strategies it's it's more about managing the crisis than shooting the zombies or anything like that now here's the thing though implementing these plans in the real world isn't as easy as it looks on paper there are huge logistical challenges to this how do you move resources fast enough for something like this how do you stop people from panicking these are all kinds of problems that military planners stay up at night thinking about trust me so with that how ready is the military for outbreaks honestly it's kind of a mixed bag they've clearly put a lot of thought into a ton of different scenarios even crazy ones like zombie outbreaks but real world situations are definitely messy and unpredictable as we've seen in 2020. No plan survives first contact with the enemy as they say, and it's even more true when you're dealing with a microscopic virus. But what about us regular folks? I mean, it's great that the military has plans, but what are we supposed to do if things go sideways? I'm sure if you've watched The Walking Dead, you've at some point or another wondered what you would do in an apocalypse like this, and The Walking Dead themselves might have answers, but they're not always the ones that you'd expect. Let's break down which survival strategies from the show could actually keep you alive, and which ones are just pure Hollywood fantasy. The Walking Dead gives us a whole bunch of survivor groups, each with their own way of doing things, but how do these stack up against real-world survivor tactics? Take the Governor and Negan, for example. These guys are all about control, manipulations, and ruling with fear. It makes for great TV drama, but in reality, not so much. When things get tough, people tend to work better together when they're not living in constant fear for their leader. Now, another example of that is the Whisperers, with their whole let's wear zombie skin suits things. That Honestly, they might actually be onto something as crazy as that sounds, but hear me out with this for a second. Their strategy is all about adapting and blending into a threat like this. And in real world survival situations, being able to adapt and use your environment is a crucial survival advantage. So what would actually work in reality? 
It turns out that The Walking Dead did get a few things right, like building a community for starters. In a real world disaster scenario, people who band together and pull their skills together tend to fare and survive longer. It's about working together and being resourceful. Dr. Lewis Dartnell, an astrobiologist who studied survival scenarios, says knowing practical skills is the key. Things like purifying water, using sunlight, or making a stove from tin cans can make a huge difference. He recommends rural areas over urban ones for long-term survival. I guess Rick's group was onto something with their prison and farm setups and places like that. But here's what the show doesn't tell you. In real world survival situations, it's not just about physical skills or tough leadership. It's about building a diverse community with a range of skills. I mean, you need farmers. You need carpenters, you need a, a ton of people, mechanics, engineers, the list goes on and on. But essentially, you need people to help you rebuild and sustain a community. And most importantly, you need to be able to make ethical decisions that keep the group together, not tear it apart. Forget zombies, there are real threats that we should be worried about. While we've been imagining apocalypses filled with the undead, the real world has been cooking up some genuinely scary scenarios, and trust me, there are threats out there that are closer to home than flesh-eating monsters. Like, really, and we've already seen some of it. Let's quickly talk about antibiotic resistance superbugs. I know that sounds like something out of a movie, but it's all too real. The World Health Organization is currently freaking out about this one, and they're saying by 2050, these superbugs could kill 10 million people per year. That's more than cancer. It's like we're going back to when a simple cut could kill you. And the whole theory around climate change is a potential health crisis in the making. The Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change dropped some scary news back in 2021, which I've always found pretty interesting. As temperatures rise in theory, we're going to see more heat waves, and these things aren't just uncomfortable. They're deadly, especially for some older folks or people with health issues, but more or less, it's because the potential for diseases to be spread out once the ice caps and things like that hypothetically start to melt in a climate scenario can lead to viruses and things like that that we've never seen before. That always scared the shit out of me when I heard that. And whether it's true or not, we don't know because it hasn't fully happened yet. Maybe it has. Let me know in the comments. But that does freak me out, for sure. <laughs> now, from a financial perspective, economic collapse might not sound as exciting as zombies, but it's, it is just as bad. When the economy starts to tank, people lose access to health care, mental health gets worse, and disease spreads even faster. And get this, experts say COVID-19 could end up costing the global economy up to $28 trillion over five years. That's a lot of zeros. The worst of all this is, unlike zombies, all these threats that we've already talked about are already here. We're not waiting for patient zero. We're living through multiple slow burning crises right now. Antibiotics are losing their power. Temperatures are going up according to science and our economies are more fragile than we'd like to admit. So what's the most likely disaster? It's not one big event, but a perfect storm of these issues coming together. Imagine a world where our medicines don't work. Heat waves are killing thousands and we don't even have the money Money to fight back. It's not as cool as zombies, but it's a whole lot more real. So we've talked about a lot of things, a lot of different diseases and all of that stuff, but realistically, is a zombie apocalypse in the state that we've seen it in, The Walking Dead, a reality? No, it's probably not, but... There are things out there that are just as bad or just as scary. So it's just a matter of like what you value in this whole thing of all this stuff. Our world faces some pretty scary challenges, but here's the thing. We're, we're not helpless. We can take steps to be ready for whatever comes our way. Maybe start with a bug out bag for survival or learn a new survival skill as it is. Just knowing that people are around you could even be a survivor skill in and of itself. But in the end, it's not about the fictional monster. It's about how we choose to live our lives and prepare for the future. Are we going to ignore warning signs or are we going to step up and be ready? The choice is really ours. And honestly, I think that's way more interesting than any zombie apocalypse as it is. So yeah, I don't know. I hope you found this 
interesting in some way. I hope you were following along. If you were, that's cool. Definitely leave a like and subscribe. And with all that out of the way, thank you again so much for watching this video. And until the next one, I'll talk to you later. Peace out.